Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Motive Media, and today we've got a brand new edition of This Week in EDM, where you go over songs that came out this week in EDM. As always, there is a Spotify link down below for all the songs and easy access listening, and uh, let's hop into it. 35 songs this week, and we're starting in the trash category. Uh, we got song in trash. As always, this is just my opinion, don't take them as gospel truth. Uh, but we've got Blaster Jacks and Timmy Trumpet with Time to Say Goodbye. Uh, the audacity to sample a grand operatic Bocelli track uh, was a decision that was made. Um, the difference Difference between the verses and drops are miles apart. Um, yeah, I don't really like hard style to begin with for the most part, and this feels like stepping on sacred ground. Um, so that's that. Uh, then we're moving into the bad category songs that I thought were uh, just plain bad. Uh, we've got Dylan Francis and Yeah Boy with Jet Setter. A pretty boring tech house uh, with equally uninteresting vocals. Um, it's kind of got the same first and second half. Well, uh, with a three minute runtime total, kind of makes the track feel like it's just one minute of new ideas and sounds. And so wasn't really a big fan of that. And uh, then we got Thirst with AF1, a huge uh, techno here with uh, big hits and a short runtime, even leading into some hard style at the end. Um, personally, though, um, this is just not my style. It's a little too jarring and too short. Um, I do understand a lot of people do like this style of Thirst, but um, this one just uh, didn't hit for me personally. They're moving into the meh category songs that I thought were pretty meh. We've got Kygo and Imagine Dragons with Stars Will Align. A very fine, new, radio-friendly collab here. Kygo's production is very simplistic and simple, uh, keeping true to his kind of tropical and progressive house sound. Um, while Imagine Dragons, on their side of things, they didn't really have a huge impact on the track, and the lead singer's um, falsetto vocals didn't really bring a whole ton of power to the track, I would say. We got Cascade and Just Us with Motivated, another kind of big room techno track with a vocal sample that's one part creepy, one part annoying, kind of just a track I didn't really care for a whole ton. We got Alan Walker and Pretty. Damn, I want to say, uh, featuring Vishal Mishra. I'm sure I butchered those with uh, Children of the Sun. This track is very much rooted in an in Indian aesthetic uh, with a sitar-like synth melody and the language being some Indian dialect of sorts. Uh, while it's not really geared towards my type of demographic, I still think the song is quite messy. I think the mixing is flat and the instrumentation just doesn't sound like it's got that real impact from Alan Walker. So I think it's just meh. They got One True God and Eddie with Demons, a minimalistic mid-tempo tune here. I didn't really like the airy vocals from One True God. It kind of reminds me a lot of Zoo and not in a great way right now. And I just thought the production overall was uh, pretty same samey for mid-tempo. Then we got Armin Van Buren and Pulsar, or with Pulsar, Polestar, that's a word. Um, yes, a very standard trance cut with a classic synth sound and song structure. Nothing too intriguing one way or another, I would say on this one. Then we got Arco and Don Diablo with Solar Eclipse, a uh, light house tune with a lot of disco influence. I do like the vibe of this track. I just didn't really find that it went anywhere with the drop uh, for me to really come back to it. It kind of just was like a, oh, this is a nice vibe. And now like still a nice vibe, not really doing much else. So that's that. Then we got Nefex and Tokyo Machine with Desperate, a unique blend of electro slash bass house with this kind of raw punk sound, um, but sadly one that didn't really connect for me. It feels too disconnected and jarring going from one kind of uh, verse section to the drops. And I do recognize this is like a pseudo remix sort of cover from Tokyo Machine that just didn't, yeah, didn't, didn't really land. The two sounds didn't feel like they gelled well together for me personally. We got Just Kidding and Ada Ross with Elevator, a simple house beat with more disco elements on this one as well. It's an easy listening track that keeps true to the sound that it establishes right off the bat, and uh, is just one that sounds a little bit better than some of the other ones I think this week, but uh, still meh for me. Then we got Ray Volpe with Game Over, a big intense dubstep sound with a fast lead melody and structurally unique switch up in the middle, practically turning the song into kind of two different songs. Um, but for me, though, I just didn't find it all that interesting. I don't really love Ray Volpe's really intense um, production, and this is one that I just think is a good track for the most part, but just didn't really land for me. So I'm just going to put it in meh. But uh, we're moving into the good category now, songs I thought were pretty good. Uh, we got Kaizo, Kaiwachi, and Cryblood with Forget My Name. Metal-infused dubstep or bro-step here with heavy screaming melodies and distorted bass lines. Um, there's a lot of audible kind of crunch on this track, and in the grand scheme of intense screaming dubstep, I think this is actually pretty solid, so... Then you got Justice and Tame Impala with Never Ender, the K Tronada remix. This is very much a K Tronada style remix with a nice drum pattern and minimalistic production. The vibes are turned up to 11 on this remix, and I will say that a majority of the kind of flavor of the original and kind of grooviness of the original is gone, but substituted for something that's a little just different in its tone. So, still pretty good. 
Then we got the Skybreak remix of Broken Things, originally by Midnight Kids featuring Lenny. And uh, yeah, tackling some new territory here as Skybreak is playing around with some more garage and a purely mellow dub sound while still keeping his um, some of his signature production elements still at the very forefront of this track. And I think this is a pretty solid remix. Then we've got Sophie featuring BC Kingdom and Liz with Live In My Truth from the album of the same name, the uh, self-titled and posthumous album from Sophie. Uh, this track in particular, I think is actually quite good with kind of bright, happy-go-lucky synth chimes and some great vocal features and accompanying chops of those vocal features. But um, for the most part, the rest of the album, I'm not really sure how I feel about it. It's a little strange, but this track in particular, I enjoyed then we got Seven Lines, Wooly, and Trivecta featuring Jim with Light in the Dark from the new Find My Way LP out now by Trivecta. Uh, this is a unique track uh, throughout this whole track list here of this album. It has a variety of styles to it with uh, Mellow Dub very much at its core, but um, kind of got like a hard style finale. But uh, yeah, all throughout this is very like a melodic dubstep sound, but I feel like it's it's a kind of variety that I haven't really heard a ton. And I think the trio does a great job of balancing the lighter and heavier sounds throughout this track. And I really enjoyed it. Then we got Fox Stevenson with Got What I Got, a classic Fox Stevenson track to the point that I think it's a bit of a derivative of its own, his own style. Um, don't get me wrong, I really do like this track. I just think I've heard other kind of better, more stronger tracks that sound very similar to this in Fox Stevenson's discography. So. Then we got Elderbrook with Afters, a melodic house cut with an atmosphere that's kind of set in this almost ethereal kind of heavenly space. Um, the mixing is fantastic, the vocals do their job, and I think the whole thing just uh, blends together quite magically. Then we've got Lane 8 and Sultan and Shepard with Quiet Rush from the new Childish LP out now by Lane 8. And this is a long, kind of drawn-out, atmospheric, progressive house tune with one real big central movement for a five-minute track. It kind of just has this build and build and build and build and build and then a big moment for about the two-thirds of the song and then it kind of comes back down. So it's a structure that I actually kind of uh, kind of like. Then we got Whipped Cream and 4-5 with Who's Laughing Now, the 100 Drums remix. Uh, this is a remix that really matched the vibe of the original and went a step further with its tone and atmosphere. Um, sound design-wise, it's a really unique kind of creepy style that reminds me a lot of Solji, actually. And I will say that those kind of last movements are quite boring and a bit unnecessary, the last singular one, I'll say. And uh, I could have used without it, but I think overall I thought the song was quite good. Quite good. Then we got Subtronics and Level Up featuring Grabbits with Power. Speaking of power, this is absolutely destructive, mind-numbing bro step that teeters into some vomit step sounds here and there. Uh, the second drop is dirty, nasty, dense, and easily the best part of the track. I would have wished maybe a little more Grabbits here, but I get why he's just a feature on this one. Then we got Rufus the Soul with Pressure. Rufus doing some more Rufus things. I really like the subtle digital sound designs uh, all throughout here that feel like it's kind of got that analog sense to it. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see what uh, Rufus is going to bring together with this collective. There's a lot of new releases coming out. I don't know if there's some larger project or EP or album. I don't know what it is, but um, it's all sounding pretty great. Then we got Coven and Steve Aoki with Nervous System, a quirky DNB cut for this huge collaboration. I don't hear a lot of Steve Aoki's production elements, but that's pretty much on par for Steve Aoki as of late. Um, overall, though, I thought it's a little bit more of a streamlined track with minimalistic elements here and there, and uh, one that I actually really enjoyed. So I like that. Then we got Night Punk and Sick Brain featuring Ollie Burden with Come Closer from the new Come Closer kind of EP, AB, double-sided single here. Uh, this is an underground, very full-sounding breakbeat cut with a variety of vocal styles and intensities. I think this is much stronger than Way Too Much, the kind of B-side of this single, EP, whatever. But uh, yeah, I just kind of feel like Sick Brain is a little bit more reserved on this one, and personally, I liked it a lot better. I'm not a huge Sick Brain fan, so I did think this track, uh, Come Closer, was not too bad, though. Then we've got the Cloud Nun remix of Hold My Breath, originally by Said the Sky and Boys Like Girls. And this is just another great Cloud Nun remix that um, does a good job of keeping the core sound of the original um, very much in the fray while adding his own garage elements for a very smooth remix. Then we've got No Taker with Back From Eternity, the VIP. The first half of this VIP is a more kind of standardized No Taker sound, but the back half is a beautifully erratic and dense style of production that very stays true to his space atmosphere and tone and just kind of dials up the, uh, like the intensity of it to uh, like a 10 or 11 for sure. 
Then we got Flux Pavilion and Cyclops featuring Illiman with Tick Tock. A, a bit of a bizarre track stylistically, but it just really works well, I would say. The main lead is catchy. Illiman brings a lot of energy, and I can very much hear um, Flux Pavilion's own elements and Cyclops' own elements uh, all throughout this track. So I really enjoyed it. And if you missed it, go watch my uh, interview with Flux Pavilion that I just did. So that's a pretty fun one. Then we've got Ace Aura with Vapor, a very unique new sound for not only Ace Aura in general, but kind of dubstep as a whole. It's kind of this like quasi color based bro step, abrasive, melodic, like there's a lot going on here. And I think Ace Aura does a really good job of blending all the sounds together. I don't love the kind of TikTok voice at the beginning, but I get that the kind of callback at the end from his manager Landon that it's pretty funny. So I, I get that sense. And so I, I don't love it, but I get it, I'll say so. Um, but it, in the, the at its core, fantastic song. Then we got Camouflage with Touch from the new Hiding EP. Um, more Garage House from the king of this style. And while it's not my favorite from the EP, Touch in particular, um, it's another cut with kind of punchy percussion and some subtle sound design elements that take the track a little bit further than it would a kind of more basic Garage House uh, style song. So really enjoyed it. Then we got Montel 2099, What's So Not, and Lucy Lucy with Skyline, a jittery hybrid trap sound um, with a garage style percussion and a very pleasing lead melody. Uh, it's a track that fits really well into the Sable Valley ecosystem and is mixed also incredibly well, probably my favorite mix of this week. Then we got Zomboy with Project Z, or Z, as us Canadians say. Uh, pretty fantastic kind of classic sounding dubstep here. Uh, Zomboy really balances the kind of screechy lead melody with a heavy bass line and is very much reminiscent of an early kind of Skrillex uh, complex dro bro step era of sound. So then we got Zensei with... Um um, um, it's called Um, actually, uh, from the new Fun LP. Uh, this might be some of Zensei's best work yet, I have to say. His kind of garage trip-hop sound is really honed in and excellent. I think the mixing is fantastic. I think he's doing more with it than kind of your basic lo-fi beats to study to. And uh, I think this is Zensei maybe at his best and prime yet, so... Then we've got San Holo and Chami with Feel Again. Uh, very surprised by this collaboration, and I'm even more surprised with how well I think it worked out. Um, Chami was a little bit more reserved on his side of things, at least what I could tell audibly, as he's kind of honed in that kind of back-end, uh, four-on-the-floor type beat. Well, I feels like San dealt a lot more with the melody of this track, and um, I'm surprised how well this collab collaboration worked, and I really enjoyed it. And finally, my number one song of the week is Knock 2, Feel You Love Me. Uh, yeah, another bass house banger from Knock 2 with a grooving kind of staircase melody here. Um, Knock 2 really knows his sound and he's fully embracing it and the king of bass house right now. So, uh, But yeah, that's been this week in EDM. Let me know what you guys think of any and all songs in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media and I'll see you guys in another video.